Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. I am so excited to be your host for our second season. And today we have our guest, David Clark. He is a native of Charlotte um, and a current resident of Charlotte. His birthday is in January 4th, 1994. He's been doing public speaking for the past five years and currently specializes in spiritual and character development. He is sought, o- sought out all over North Carolina and South Carolina and has even been invited to Florida, Virginia, Georgia, Ohio, Arizona, Alabama, Texas, Utah, uh, where he's spoken to various churches, academic institutes of all levels, civic and nonprofit organizations. He is truly has a passion for helping others. He motivates individuals families, and communities in hopes to inspire them so that they can reach their full potential. In addition to um, in addition to that, he encourages them to in a world full of despair, which has become his motivational philosophy. David is better known for his relatability, humility, brashness from combating the norm stigmas that society illustrates. He uses the most effective ways of communicating uh, which is complete transparency out of love. Y'all know we are all about that here on the Chasing Dreams podcast. When doing speaking, his go-to method is problem solving in farmers with a farmer's mentality, which means he digs through the dirty problems until the root of the issue arise. Then together we can pull them up and reestablish a firm foundation. David, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Miss Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Listen, as you were, as you were uh, introducing me, I started to think like, is it someone else joining the call? Like she can't be talking about me. Who is she talking about? <laughs> Thank I you so understand. much. Yes, I have those moments too where I'm like, wait, I did all that. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it is a good feeling for sure. So today we're talking about spiritual development a little bit. So, but I want to start off by asking you, what is the dream for you? Um, the dream for me is to be able to, one, um, expose my family to a, to a new way of living. And mm-hmm. when I say that, um, taking them out of that current environment, not so physical environment, but mental environment mm-hmm. um, of used to things being a certain kind of way. You know, my grandmother grew up um, during the Great Depression. My mother grew up during Jim Crow. Like, we can do whatever we want now, you know? Like, we can do whatever we want now. We can go wherever, be wherever. Um, and that, and that's just it, you know? Being able to just enjoy life to the fullest. For sure. So when did you realize the dream, and how has it changed over the years? Um. It changed when I realized that I'm just as deserving of the dream as anyone else, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, realizing who I am as an individual, realizing who God made me and created me to be. And when I fully realized that, and I'm sad, sad to say this, but uh, I realized it like last year. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So when I realized that, I realized that nothing can stop me, you know? Mm -hmm. For sure. So walk us through what spiritual and character development looks like. Like, what does that mean? Um, Spiritual and character development means um, being able to uh, being able to just simply build upon who you are Mm -hmm. um, as far as character, being being able to build upon who you are, um, realizing uh, that there's always the next level from where you are. Um, mm-hmm. Spiritual development, um, getting in touch with whoever your higher power is. Mm-hmm. You know, just being able to align yourself properly uh, with that and, and just being able to, again, realize who you really are. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of us don't realize that. You know, we don't realize the real true power that we really have as individuals, you know? Right. So if I'm listening to this podcast and I'm like, okay, that's great, but I don't know my purpose. I don't know um, who I was called to be. How would I even figure that out? Uh, that's a tricky one. That's a really good question. <laughs> um, it, it, it really depends on the individual. Like, for example, myself, um, when I decided to go on that journey for myself, I had to 
disconnect from everything. I had to disconnect. I had to get to and by myself and be able to really focus. And it took a lot of prayer, a lot of self-discipline, um, and a lot of looking in the mirror, Miss Nicole. I had to look at myself and I just had to, you know, stop making excuses, you know, blaming other people mm -hmm. for, you know, where I was, what I was doing. And I had to just look at myself and simply say, you know what, David, you are the problem. Yeah. You know, Sometimes it's <laughs> and, like that. and it's so hard to do, you know, <laughs> like it's so hard to do. It is. <laughs> it's so hard to do. But when I really, you know, honed in and zoned in on that and I was able to, you know, break down in myself and get to the nitty gritty, you know, the root of my issues and be able to really self heal. And when I was able to reestablish re um, the foundation of who I am the right way and who I really am, mm -hmm. it has absolutely done wonders in, in my life personally. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on the individual. Awesome, awesome. So I have a, a, a fun question of sorts. Okay. If you had to pick a Bible character that you most res resonate with, who would you pick? Oh, man. Can I, can I have two? Can I have two? Sure. <laughs> But you gotta let us know why. You gotta you gotta break it down. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and we can be transparent, correct? A thousand percent. Okay. That is all we do here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm I'm gonna give you um one first. I'm gonna give you the 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 secondary one, then I move to the primary. So okay. um I will consider myself Paul. I see a lot of Paul okay. in me, although although he wasn't a, a disciple of Jesus. It, his brashness, his creativity, his wordplay, his demeanor, his, his like when you see him, you know, on the road to Damascus, you know, you know, killing the killing the people that he ended up becoming one. Like it, it was just so mind blowing to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The transformation. Um, also, he is such a hard worker. Mm. He worked tremendously hard to spread the very thing that saved him and yep. that was the gospel i mean it was just it, it paul is just phenomenal to me okay uh, to me it, and then of course i have to go with my namesake miss nicole davy <laughs> i have <laughs> okay I have so beyond to, the name beyond <laughs> the name break it down for me oh absolutely absolutely so um being young being young, I've, I've always been told I'm different. I've always been told, um, you know, my I'm a king. You know, I've always been told that. So then when I started to read and study David in the Bible for myself, I realized me and him had a lot of the same characteristics, you know, the good and the bad. Uh, and that's how I could, I was able to identify myself with him and his love for God and also his, his wordplay um, when it comes to uh, the books and the verses he wrote. Uh, mm -hmm. depicting how he loved God and, you know, how he depicted himself. It, it's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like, David and Paul, I definitely see myself as. Okay. Definitely, definitely, definitely can relate so, to So, I'm going to share just, you know, so for the audience sake, but um, I went from, so 2016 to 2017, 18, I would say I was uh, Job. I really yeah. heavily resonated with Job um, within, so I didn't lose all that in one day, but within one month's time, I lost, I was, I was pregnant with twins and I lost them three weeks apart. So I lost both, both of my children. I lost my job. I lost money. My car got repossessed. Like I literally hit rock bottom and there was no rhyme or reason to it. Right. And um, unfortunately, the, the the church community doesn't speak a lot about grief or and certainly not a lot about miscarriage. But I'm like, grief happens all the time. Like, what is the Christian response supposed to be to grief? And the only thing that I could find that gave me a sense of peace was the story of Job and understanding that bad things happen to good people just because. And when you look at the beginning part of Job's story, literally God challenged the devil and was like, you can't make him curse me. You know, like that, that's my child. I know what he's capable of handling and you could do whatever you want. Just don't hurt him. 
um, you know, he lost friends, his wife walked out on him, he lost all his children, lost all his animals, all his, you know, which is equivalent to wealth and all these other things. Um, so literally the month of October 2016 was the whole book of Job in my life. So, you know, and then the aftermath of that is feeling like, um, you know, God restored everything double for his trouble. So I had lost my job, but um, the very next job I got practically doubled my income. I had lost friends, but then I gained stronger friends, you know, and just all these other things. I don't have no kids, so I did not. <laughs> we did not double <laughs> twins, okay? I think that was enough doubling. I, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Um, so I definitely heavily resonated with the book of Job at that time. However, I will say, I think I've transitioned into David, actually, before a different mm-hmm. I feel like I most resonate with David because he was such a flawed person. David was a drunk. He was a murderer. He was a cheater. Mm-hmm. He lied. Like, David was messed up. But every time you hear God speak about David, it's, That's a man after my own heart. Uh, And that's what I believe, even despite my flaws, despite my challenges, despite all the things that I'm wrong, I constantly make an effort to do what he wants me to do. I've committed my life, my business, my purpose to doing what I feel like he is asked of me. Um, And the one thing to point out about David's story is he was always seen doing the last thing God told him to do. He was anointed king and then went back to go tend to the sheep. He was called to serve the previous king and still went back to go tend his sheep. Like David had a sense of responsibility. He had a sense of commitment. And even though he was anointed king at a young age, he knew it's not my time. God didn't tell me to go to the to the kingdom now. Like a lot of people. Yeah get anointed as a king and be like, all right, I'm ready to go. Let me pack up my boxes. The Lord has called me, you know, et cetera. But sometimes he's going to call you and show you exactly what you're going to be. But you still need to go back to go tend to the sheep. Uh And that humility to be able to say, I know what's coming, but it's not my time yet. And that's okay. In the meantime, I'm going to do the last thing he told me to do. So that's how I feel, but I, I definitely feel like I resonate with David now. I'm I'm at least trying to be <laughs> David in this moment. Um, okay. which part of that is embracing my flaws, but also the other part is like constantly doing the last. Like, what did God tell me to do? Mm. And that's it. That's it. Um. But yeah, so what advice do you have for anyone who wants to work on their character development, wants to work on their spiritual growth? Like, what are, what are some advice that you have for us? Um, be sure that that's what you want to do. Mm, that's okay. I, be sure that's what you want to do because you have to be careful about um, your your goal setting and what you and your proclamations on you know what you what you say that you want because once you say you want it it's out there mm-hmm. and once it's out there it, life has its way um of really pulling Great. that out of you. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh just even on a on a deeper spiritual level um once you say it you know the devil is the prince of the air so once you say it out there he now sees that um so he can easily you know try to get you off that path um, it won't work, but you know, the Bible said the weapon um, would not be formed. He just said it wouldn't prosper. Right. So you have to be you have to be careful of that and uh, be ready for the battles that's going to come with that. You have to be ready for the work that comes with that. And as you were saying, how um, you you looked at yourself as David, you know, you connected more with David. And I can honestly see that for you too, Miss Nicole, because one of the things that David did, and he did a lot, and one of the reasons why I connect with him so well, is that David was not about flashiness. He right. was not about. He wasn't about being pretty, looking pretty. That mm-hmm. man was in the dirt. He was in the valley, like he was in the trenches, and and that's where you have to go if you if you want that. You have to be accustomed with that, because you'll see once you get in the kingdom, the kingdom is actually just as dirty as the trenches. Hello. I'm not time for the folks in the I'm not here to preach. Yeah. I'm not here to preach. 
<laughs> that's just but that's, that's the truth, though, honestly and truly. And it's funny that you say, be careful what you uh, pray for, because I actually just had this conversation with one of my really good friends. And I was like, you can't ask God for patience and not expect a test to come. Like, the only way to learn patience is to be tested because he was frustrated that like everywhere, like every grocery store and the gas station and the bank, like everywhere he went, there was a line. I was like, you recently paid for patience, didn't you? And he was like, yeah, because that's how that shows up. Like you, my view of character development, God puts us through challenges and puts us through tests and puts us through the hard things, whether he authorized, whether he authored it or not, he approved it because of character development. God is not interested in us being happy. Happy is a byproduct. What he's interested in is our character development. And sometimes those challenges and those frustrations and those irritations comes in life to teach us patience. I'm like, you didn't drove around to five different banks when you could have just waited in the one line. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, just get a little patience and just sit there for five, ten minutes and go on about your day. Like, the show goes on. But the more patience you show, I've learned the more patience I show, the less I get frustrated. Like, the less lines I honestly see. But even when I see a line, I'm like, hmm, okay. You know, like, you learn to deal with life's challenges through those through getting through those challenges successfully. Um, and I believe that the the quicker you learn that lesson, the quicker you can move on, you know? <laughs> yes. Learn it the first time, and then we can progress to something different, you know? For sure. So what would you say is your number one secret to success? Mm. My number one secret. Um, your mindset your mindset once you realize that before you even start anything your mindset determines if you're going to achieve it or not mm -hmm. definitely your mind um, if you can keep that positive attitude you know the positive mindset um, also watch your energy you, like with your energy as well uh, you get out what you put in um, so if you can, you know, keep that, keep that, <laughs> keep that positive flowing out, you know, positive affirmations with me, um, I've gotten to the point where I'm so deep into this. I just, I, I, I ordain stuff now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, you know, whatever I need, like I can ordain it. I tell it to come to me. Mm -hmm. um, all the, all the running around stuff, stress and stuff that does me no good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just ordain it, you know, ordain it, live your life and keep that positive energy. And I guarantee you, it will come to you. It will definitely come to you. You will Very finish fun. the task. It'll come faster. It'll come double. Um, you'll definitely enjoy it. Like, listen, just, just listen, try it, try it. Exactly. And mindset really is everything. Um, I The past couple of years, I've been looking into uh, the law of attraction and the interest. Yeah. Thing about the law of attraction is it's one of very few times where God and science align. Come, yes, comes together. Like in a practical sense, it works. In a spiritual sense, it works. So to me, that means it really, really, really works. Um, and I'm currently reading the uh, the secret as well. Um, I've watched the documentary before, but I'm also now reading it um, in addition to. And it's really one of those things where what you First of all, what you focus on will grow. Secondly, what you put out into the universe literally comes back to you. So yeah. if you allow yourself to get in a bad mood or have a funk, then the rest of the day begins to spiral. Um, and a previous guest, um, she, she brought up a great point. Like, you got to look at the circumstance. Your thoughts then become your feelings, then that becomes your actions, then your actions bring the results. But if you stop at the thought level and take control of that part, you can change the whole game. The circumstance didn't change, but the results can simply by changing your thought process and not even just like magically changing your thought process. Sometimes you have to be intentional. Like if you start to have a thought, you're like, ah, nope. We're not yeah, 
And I have yeah. those conversations with myself all the time. Like you have to catch it and change it. <laughs> Make a conscious effort to adjust your thought process. Um, and the more consistent you are with focusing on what you want, the more you start to see what you want show up. Mm -hmm. It just pops up in your life. And you're like, huh, okay, now let's do that again. <laughs> For sure. So what final thoughts do you have for our audience? Um, I just want to simply tell them personally how much I proud, how much proud I am of them um, for, you know, their, them being here, you know, doing what they have to do for themselves and their family, um, them being who they are as as a person. Like, I'm just proud of your audience because yeah. if they're, they're tuning in to you. I know they're getting fed well daily coming from you, Miss ah, Nicole. Certainly I certainly hope so, child. <laughs> <laughs> I know. For sure, for sure. So where can people find you? Um, on Facebook as David Clark, um, Instagram as DC Inspires. Um, and I'm always, 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 always one message or comment away. Like I am not hard to find. <laughs> I am not awesome. hard. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the Chasing Dreams podcast. I really and truly hope the audience has gained um, just even just one little nugget, even just the one. Um, so I definitely appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being a part of our show today. The pleasure was all mine, Miss Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Absolutely. only here because I was invited. <laughs> thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. No problem. Thank you.